Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming. Thank you for, it's, it's a full room early in the day. This is very good. Um, yeah, let's get let's get snug. We've got we've got 20 minutes, so we haven't got very long. Um, so we're not going to cover all the Balkans. <laughs> we're going <laughs> we're, we're gonna to try and cover only the messy part. Yeah, try and cover three countries um, as uh, as quickly and as thoroughly as we can. Uh, to help me uh, directly to my left, I've got Luca Popovich, who's a partner at uh, law firm BDK Advocati, which is probably not how you say that, but, but you know we'll go with that. Uh, and another lawyer, but one from uh, within the industry, uh, data protection officer at uh, Ensoft Slatan Masperic. Uh, and we're going to focus on Serbia, Montenegro, and Bosnia and Herzegovina. And let's start with Montenegro, I think. Um, so set the scene as quickly as you can. Uh, give us give us a kind of overview what the what the gambling situation is there uh, as regards regulation and so forth. Thank you. Well, the monitoring legislation uh, dates from 2004, and in the meantime, the leg 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 legislator has not done uh, so much in keep keep keeping the uh, regulations uh, up to date and uh, following the trends in the industry. So the regulation is more focused on traditional land-based uh, business operations, uh, less on online offering online business. And uh, currently, I see there the biggest issue is in that that the regulator does not recognize online business as a standalone business. Actually, it sees it as a kind of extension of of, of traditional uh, gaming business. So uh, that means that that one cannot go directly and ask for a license uh, for online business, but you need to set up uh, a land-based business in Montenegro. Uh, uh, brick and mortar, and then you can qualify for for the online license, which is a shame because otherwise uh, Montenegro has a pretty appealing uh, taxation system and general taxation also in, in in the gaming sector. On the other hand, uh, this lack of focus of the legislator on on remote gambling uh, is good in that uh, you basically when you get the license for online gaming. You can do anything, offer anything in the website. There are no restrictions, no technical requirements, uh, no requirements for the type of games you can offer, for the number of games you, you can offer. Paradise so, for yeah. private <laughs> operators. Wow. Uh, so I, I think that's that's the key issue we have now in, in Montenegro in terms of the legislation. Also, uh, compliance-wise, we are still not part of the EU. We are negotiating, uh, so our laws are still not adopted. Uh, in line with with um, uh, GDPR and the AML directives, uh, of course, uh, as a part of this negotiation uh, process, we are obliged to harmonize our legislation. So we expect uh, maybe not fully compliant, fully GDPR compliant law, but to some extent uh, in, in the next period. But so far, I don't see that, that there is uh, so much of a burden for for the gaming operator for, for, uh, from that in that sense. Um, I, I, as a British person, I shouldn't comment on the um, virtues or otherwise of being a member of the European Union. <laughs> but um, it, it, there is, I think, you were saying there, there is new legislation in theory in the works. It, it, as, uh, is there a is there a bill drafted, or is there just sort of intent? Well, I was speaking last year at this conference, and I started with saying we are expecting the new legislation by the end of the year. So. I could start again in the same fashion, saying we're expecting the same new legislation from the past year until the end of this year. So uh, the things uh, have not progressed much. So, I mean, what, what are the kind of key, what, what are the, the big changes to that bill? What would introduce? I think that the issues I mentioned, especially with online gaming, uh, the new legislation would tackle that issue and regulate it in a different fashion. Also, uh, the current legislation lacks any rules on prevention of problem gambling. Uh, so it, the law is completely silent in that, so I, I think that new legislation should also well, should co also cover that. And there is an issue, we don't have lottery in Montenegro since December 2016. Um, the situation is a bit strange because uh, the current legis legislation was, as I said, crafted in 2004. The lottery was back then owned by the state so there was no need for some things to be regulated. For example, um, uh, a fee to award a license is not existing. 
And in the meantime, um, uh, the lottery had been privatized and it lost its license, it actually expired in 2016. And now we have legislation which provides for monopoly, which uh, provides no uh, concession fee, award concession fee. So there's no sense for the government to award uh, a concession to anyone before we have new legislation in place. I mean, when, when that legislation comes in, in theory, if it does, I mean, would there, are you expecting there to be a, an open tender for the lottery license? Yeah, yeah. And I think it would be an interesting opportunity for potential investors. Yeah, I mean, uh, there, there's an, a, a dearth of, of new opportunities for this, those lottery companies, so I think that I would imagine there'd be quite a lot of interest. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, do, do we have a sense of why the bill has is languishing? Do you actually expect it to pass by the end of this year, or are you? What's your what's your kind of percentage optimism versus pessimism? Well, maybe eighty percent. Eighty percent optimism. Okay, yeah. okay good. Uh, uh, I think there are two reasons. Uh, the first reason is that the government was, in my view, not quite sure which direction to take in terms of online remote gambling, in terms of the lottery, also in terms of taxation. Currently, there is no tax on winnings. Uh, and uh, the second reason is that uh, you know we have different interests from different operators from different areas, so they're lobbying, and I think that also influenced the process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. familiar story. Um, before before we move on to Bosnia, I, I get a sense of so how many how many roughly how many licensed online operators are there? I know you said you have to have a, a land based presence. Montenegro. Yeah, five six. Okay, and 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 uh, I'm presuming therefore. There is a reasonably large, let's call it grey market. Um, is that the case? So there are a lot of well, a lot of offshore operators that yeah, Montenegro definitely. Is Montenegro is is doing nothing in that sense. Um, it's not permitted if you interpret the law in the right way. It's not permitted, uh, but there is no action in that sense. No, so they're, we're not doing. They're not doing as we heard earlier, sending no. letters to Malta politely. No, no, to pay fine. definitely no letters. Serbia is trying to do something, of course doesn't have much effect, mm. but Montenegro is not doing anything. Okay, well, we'll, we'll talk about Serbia in a minute, uh, but we should... <laughs> Let's talk about Bosnia for a bit. Um, so, again, uh, uh, it would be good if you could give us a, a quick overview of, um, of what the situation is, and then we'll delve more into one particular region where things are... Yeah, yeah. Do you have, I would say, one minute to do that? <laughs> it's, it's quite a minute. Uh, thank you, thank you. Um, Joe, hello everyone. It's a great uh, pleasure to see you again after the uh, summer break. Uh, thank you that you mentioned this uh, regulatory overview that, that we uh, uh, done. I hope so that that uh, it was a useful uh, document. Uh, regarding um, Bosnia and Herzegovina, I will give the brief uh, regulatory and market overview. Uh, first of all, I need to emphasize that Bosnia and Herzegovina is, um, has a, a complex constitutional uh, system. We had uh, two uh, federal units, uh, Republic of Srpska and Federation of Bosnia and Herzegovina, and one um, town which had special, admi which is a special administrative unit, the Brčko district, and uh, all of that uh, unit has uh, own betting Betting Act. Uh, so, uh, um, the, 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 on, on the state level, the state doesn't have any competence to be policy and lawmaker in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Everything is on federal uh, unit. And so, if you want to operate uh, uh, through the to the Bosnia and Herzegovina, you need to get a license in uh, both of these um, federal units and, of course, the Brčko district if you want to have shops there. So that's co that could be quite operational and fi financial problem, but okay, uh, we have a, we have a, a very stable uh, market. Our betting company, companies uh, increasing their, their profit. Uh, people like to play uh, all kind of betting games uh, that I would like to emphasize, for example, live betting, uh, virtual games, role-based games. So, its uh, betting industry is uh, very popular in the citizens of Bosnia and Herzegovina, but not in the um, uh, government and uh, and uh, politicians. So, uh, we have some uh, legal and compliant issue regarding uh, new betting act in the Republic of Srpska, which we. Have a 30 seconds. Yeah. In the well, next we'll talk about in the next session. We'll talk about Serbia <laughs> it specifically in a second, but uh, I just I just wanted to, to, to clarify. I mean, it, gambling regulation and legislation being devolved to, to different areas is, is that 
is that a co kind of constitutional fact? Uh, of Bosnia is that it, there's no there's no way to change that right that's uh, I think that there is no way to change it there is no need to change that uh, if we're talking about the constitutional system but maybe we can have a more more um, useful solution if we have a one a one law on the state one act on the state uh, a level and um, unique unique markets to do. Is that possible? Or is um, I, I think that is the more political than legal question, okay. then I think that is not so possible. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Same answer. Um, okay, right, Serbska specifically, we're going to talk about that because they have a new gambling act. Uh, it's messy. Uh, r run us through what, <laughs> what it is and what the problems are right now, and I'll give you two minutes for this because it's complicated. <laughs> Right now, yeah, go, <laughs> okay, go. Okay, uh, we have uh, we had a chat through the email uh, when when this this was the hot topic last this, this is a hot topic last six months. Um, Republic of Srpska uh, has a new, new uh, gambling uh, regulation, and I will just put the the two or three main 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 things here in one article. Uh, uh, they define that only uh, lottery of Republic Srpska uh, uh, has the right to 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 uh, be the betting company to have a, have a license. So, uh, in other other provision of that, that of the same article, they say that that other uh, companies can have the the, the betting uh, betting uh, license, but they need to have 50 plus one percent of the public uh, uh, ownership in that company. So we have the state, the, the monopoly of the that federal unit, uh, in accordance with that that article. And, and is that apply uh, to land based and online as well? Yes, yes, land based and uh, and that is the huge problem for betting operator in the Republic of Serbia and someone. Uh, like Premier uh, uh, announced that they will close their uh, their betting uh, retail shops and business at all. How many incumbent operators were there roughly before? I think about uh, I don't know the exact number, but I think that ten ten. Uh, right, com that's ten pretty significant for yeah. those companies. Yes, then they have a uh, two. Uh, 2,000 more than 2,000 employees. So, on uh, if you have um, half a million uh, unemployed citizens in Bosnia, the two 200 more is a huge, huge problem. Uh, this uh, this uh, 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 betting act is completely uh, uh, not in accordance with European market standards. Uh, that mm, and that is very weird why they uh, decide to go in this. Uh, 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 solution because um, the main uh, uh, European European regulation is the free market and uh, monopoly is something what is uh, what is what is not definitely the legal and the best solution for 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 uh, market here. Um, and there is uh, a period they were given a period of six months to comply with that the, the industry, uh, which is we think nearly up. Uh, and you were mentioning also there are some secondary regulations which need to be passed that haven't yeah. been passed yet. Can you talk a bit more of yeah. through that. We have uh, we have uh, two uh, two important dates. First is that uh, a Ministry of Finance uh, should uh, uh, adopted the the secondary leg, leg, uh, uh, legislation in accordance with that, this law, and they didn't do uh, yet. Uh, of course, uh, uh, the the period of uh, six months that com company needs to to comply with that law is expiring in the next few days, so we will see what is going, what is going to next uh, happen. One interesting thing is also in one article they said that the betting is um, gambling industry is a public in public, in public interest uh, of uh, Republic of Srpska. But when they are adopting this law and when they are go to the uh, process of uh, adopting, they didn't organize any public discussion about that. So how we can talk about public interest that you didn't ask the stakeholders, uh, betting uh, betting companies, uh, what they think about that law, which is a uh, public interest. So that 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 is uh, something what what, what would breach the the the, uh, the most important uh, principle of of regulatory process. This is not the regulatory process. This is something what is uh, uh, really a problem uh, for for uh, for. Market, free market, and so on. 
I mean, is there any prospect of, of a legal challenge to, to the law, either on a, on a state level or, or European level, for, for, for the, the reasons you've outlined, either because they didn't consult properly or because it doesn't, doesn't match up to European standards? Yeah, definitely. Uh, it's weird because Bosnia and Herzegovina is seeking to become the member of the uh, European Union, and we, with this this uh, law, we we step uh, we step a few a uh, few step uh, uh, back. Uh, so I don't know what's going to happen in the future. In some industry, I must admit, we are complying with the European standards like banking, insurance industry. But with with betting, uh, I think that the most problem is that the country, whatever the level of state we, we talk, uh, don't, don't have a, a, a strategy what to do with this industry. They are fully aware that this is a very profitable industry, but they don't know how to uh, make a taxation, how to make taxation process, how to do do we need a free market uh, monopoly, oligopoly system? They, they are, uh, they are trying to make some uh, uh, solution, and this solution what they find is not so good, especially in the public of Serbia. Yeah. Serbia. <laughs> <laughs> right, we have a, a couple of minutes left, so let's uh, let's chat through there. I mean, the situation there, ga uh, regulation wise, is a bit more developed, certainly in Montenegro. Um, yeah, again, uh, as quickly as you can. What's what's kind of the lay of the land? In Serbia at the moment. Well, yeah, the, the legislation in Serbia is you know a bit a, a bit better than than one in Montenegro. Um, I think the most interesting is what happened uh, recently. That uh, for a long time there was a battle about uh, the tax on winnings, uh, which was affecting uh, betting operators, which quite high it was twenty percent, and uh, the threshold uh, was quite low. The threshold for taxation. Around, I think, 100 euros. Uh, so uh, this year, finally, this threshold was lifted to some 800 something euros, which was declared as a victory uh, by by you know, the betting betting operator groups and associations uh, opposing to some others uh, who were not affected because uh, the tax was affecting only betting operations, not, for example, uh, slot slot machines or casinos. Uh, the second uh, important thing that happened is uh, the change of, of the regulator, uh, as was discussed uh, the first, on the first panel. Uh, the new independent regulator uh, has been instituted. Uh, so far, before it was uh, the Ministry of Finance. Now it's it's uh, an uh, not fully independent because the Ministry of Finance is still controlling its work, but still it's a separate organization. Uh, separate uh, organization for for regulation of the uh, games of chance sector, as it's it's called, with professionals, which is more focused on on the industry, with people from the industry, in uh, its lines. Uh, I mean, do we have uh, a new regulator? Can, can be quite significant for a market. I mean, do we have a sense of what their priorities are for the next year or so? I mean, what what are they going to be focusing on in terms of? Well, it, it, it's too early to say. It's been just a couple of months since they started, so it, we will see. But it, I mean, there is general, generally, it's been praised by the industry this move. You know. For now, yeah, for now, for now. Um, okay, uh, I think we. Uh, I'd like to ask a couple of kind of general questions about about the Balkans, specifically your, the regions you guys know about. I mean, it was touched on in the previous panel, but I think it's going to be brought up again and again, uh, uh, gambling advertising is a pretty fundamental issue um, so far as gambling regulation is concerned right now in Europe. Uh, how, uh, in Bosnia to begin with, what's what's the sense on, on gambling advertising? We've seen it certainly in Western Europe, the public has become kind of uh, disgruntled, let's say, annoyed by the amount of gambling advertising and that's resulted in political action. Are we, are we heading in the same way at all in, in, in your region or is it is it not really an issue yeah. on the agenda yet? I must admit that uh, in Bosnia and Herzegovina we don't have uh, open legal um, compliance issue regarding the advertising. We uh, have completely um, every um, betting company have absolutely uh, free chance to to advertise um, their products on on in, uh, media, electronic or newspapers or so on. And only. Uh, what we have is the that that is forbidden to advertise um, gambling in the I don't know for example newspapers or some uh, some uh, television programs 
which are uh, um, uh, related to child or uh, some some uh, min minority groups or like that. Uh, only to in that way, without without right. that. If uh, and of course you need to have um, approval from Ministry of Finance on federal units level, and I talked about that uh, process with. Um, some uh, colleagues from back in Paraguay, they said that they don't have a problem with that. Okay, they're yeah. relatively stable. Yeah, that this this is the regarding this previous question. Uh, good, good, good. Uh, and good. How about in Serbia or, or Montenegro? Well, similarly, actually, this wave of bans hasn't reached our shores yet. So, uh, I don't think there are any intentions so far, as far as I'm aware, in that sense. Uh, Montenegro again is more liberal in that you can advertise anything uh, licensed, non-licensed, you know, you, you won't have any consequences at all. Serbia um, restricts uh, uh, advertising of, of unlicensed, not licensed is that operators. Effectively? Or? Uh, yeah, this is fact. Okay. Uh, and, and there are, of course, similarly, similar as, as, as in Bosnia, uh, advertising has to be done uh, taking into account protection of, of uh, children, underage people, and similar. Okay, and um, in Serbia, is the, does the new regulator have competence for, for advertising, or is that still does that sit with another re with another regulator? It's sitting with another regulator. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right, I think that is more or less twenty minutes. Are we allowed to see if there's any questions? Okay, I've got permission. Okay, are there any questions, uh, or does everyone need coffee? Uh, stick your hand up if you've got a question about anything. Is Mark? It should not be the void. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, break time. Thank you. Right, thank, thank you, guys. You.